Hello, everyone, and welcome to Food Allergy Canada's Creating a Better Future webinar series. Thank you for joining us today on a very, very exciting and interesting topic, Rock Your Food Allergy with myself, Kyle Dine. I have many food allergies myself to peanut, tree nut, egg, fish, shellfish, and mustard. And today I'm gonna to be walking through uh, some of my own experiences. I'm gonna be giving a lot of tips, a lot of practical advice and tips. And then at the very end, we are going to have question and answer. So uh, I know a lot of you have already submitted questions in advance upon registration. Thank you very much, we have those. And if you have any questions throughout, feel free to use the question and answer box on the console and we will have a full Q&A session at the end. But to start off today, we're going to launch a poll question just to see where everybody's at in terms of uh, this topic. So the question is, on a scale of one to five, how confident are you or you think your child is in managing their food allergy? Uh, from one being not at all confident all the way to five, very or extremely confident. And I guess if you're doing this webinar on behalf of your, your child or teen, you can kind of choose for them where, where you think they're at. Okay, so three more seconds and then let's see where we're all at on this scale. And uh, this, you know, looks like more on the, the higher end of the spectrum of, of confidence with 22% showing extreme confidence, which is fantastic. That a lot of the stuff I'll cover today might be old news for you, but hopefully you'll gain some new things as well. Uh, and it doesn't matter where you are on this spectrum. Um, it, it, you know, for food allergy, there's not always a black and white way to, to, to manage and to feel, to build confidence. And today I'm gonna hopefully take whatever level you're at and build upon that. Um, and giving some effective strategies. So yeah, thanks for, for doing that. And we'll, uh, we'll do a wrap up poll at the, at the end today. But ultimately the goal of this webinar is to not only just educate and take you to the next level in terms of practical tips of, of management, but also to inspire you um, on how to be the best and safest you can be with food allergy and providing tips on how to own how to really own your own food allergy narrative. And I'll talk a lot about that today. Well, a little about, about me first. Um, my name is Kyle Dine and I, am a, I work with Food Allergy Canada as a program coordinator. I do a lot of work with their youth programs, specifically their Allergy Pals, Allergy Allies online mentorship program. Um, beyond my work with Food Allergy Canada, I am an educator and an entertainer. I actually go into schools all across North America and I do food allergy awareness assemblies uh, in a really fun and engaging way through music and puppets and games, but really with the goal to educate not only the kids with food allergies, but to spread awareness to those who do not that know somebody with an allergy. Uh, I'm also an entrepreneur. Um, my company is Equal Eats, soon to be launching next month, where it's setting to, it's aiming to set the gold standard in dietary cards in over 50 different languages. But first and foremost, there's a lot more to me than just food allergy. I am a, a traveler. I am a father, I'm an athlete, I am a nature lover, and most recently a master's graduate in business. So these are the things that I would consider that actually define me much, much more than uh, the fact that I have food allergies. So that's really, really important to me that uh, I'm known for the other things that make me unique um, other than food allergies. You're probably wondering, did I always rock my food allergy? <laughs> what a picture. Well, up uh, up until this picture, I would say I really did rock my food allergy, and nowadays I do, but there was a little bit of a gap in between that time in my teenage years, and I'll talk about that. But this picture always makes me smile because I'm not sure of the year, probably this is early 90s, and it's a, mi a great mix in this picture of cool, and safety and you know at this time the the neon blue fanny pack was so cool and i had my epinephrine in there i had two of them right inside 
I had the really cool Timex watch at the time, but right below it, I had my medical alert bracelet. You can kind of see it there on my wrist. Uh, and then everything else was just, you know, a lot of cool in one picture there. So I got my polarized sunglasses, my, I think those are uh, track pants on, but that, that horse is obviously uh, pretty envious of that kid right there. But that is probably me around 12 years old, I think. But at the end of the day, you know, for my parents, that was really important of making sure that I was compliant with the safety I needed to, to do with carrying my epinephrine, wearing my medical alert, but also feeling like a normal kid, um, you know, so I could fit in with my friends and, and do everything that my friends were doing. And that's, that's a big topic today. I let down my guard a bit as a teenager um, trying to fit in. And um, today I am open to any of your questions regarding that period um, specifically, because it is a tough time, those transitions within. Um, now as an allergic adult, uh, especially after I had a severe reaction myself, I am very diligent and I am very confident in how to manage my food allergies, which is what I'll be sharing a lot of today. So the topic is rocking your food allergy, but let's get real, it is not easy to rock your food allergy. This is a bit of an uphill climb today. Um, and it's not easy because of several reasons that we're all very aware of. For one, reactions can be scary, right? I've experienced a few allergic reactions before, and they can really rattle you. And at times that you don't really feel like you're beaming with confidence afterwards. So yes, reactions can absolutely be scary. I empath empathize with you if you've had them. We have a very interesting and complicated relationship with food. We know it's nutritious and we need it, but at times we, uh, you know, we're told to avoid so many different things um, that we can have a very different impression of food than a lot of people with without food allergy. For me, I am I appreciate food. I wouldn't call myself a foodie, um, but it's it's there for my nutrition and overall energy and health. But uh, whatever relationship you have with food, it's okay. It, there's there's no black or white with food allergy. There's the issue of just wanting to fit in. Um, and you know, I've been excluded before from parties, from birthday parties, from activities, and that's not easy to deal with. That does not make you become confident in those situations. It kind of makes you angry and upset. And it lends to this next point of peer pressure. You know, you want to fit in, you want to be included. So, you know, are you willing to bend on your, your safety principles that are instilled in, in you that you know, um, just to, to try to feel a little bit more normal? And that those are tough situations for sure. Feeling like a burden. And the more kids I talk to with food allergy, the more I hear that this is one of the top issues at all, of all, is just feeling like a burden to others, that they're inconveniencing other people because of their food allergy. Maybe they're limiting their choice in restaurants or limiting their choice in activity. So, you know, that's, that's a feeling that's common. It's very common and it's, it's a tough one to deal with. And then, you know, last but not least, first kisses, dating, and that whole scene. And, um, and, and that could be tough when you add a, a serious, severe allergy into the mix. And obviously you wanna be getting that message out early to someone before you're about to, to put their, your lips on there. So we'll talk about all of these things in, in more detail today and really how to have some strategies to overcome them all and more. So I, I really just wanted to acknowledge that it's normal to just have troubles, have struggles with your food allergy on, on a lot of different psychosocial levels. It's uh, it's not easy, but it can get easier and easier. And that's why, you know, kudos to you for coming today to learn some steps to start attacking these things and, and be better. You know, it's it's hard to, to rock your food allergy when at times that you're not feeling normal about it. But really, I always try to keep it in perspective of what is normal, really, anyways. You know, if you think of 6% of the Canadian population having a food allergy, 6%, that's a great deal of people. Um, and then you compare that with some other things that we consider quite normal, having green eyes, blonde hair, naturally blonde hair, born twins, like these are all lower than food allergy. And these are the types of things that I personally keep in perspective when I'm dealing with my food allergies in, in real life because um, it helps me stay grounded. It helps me remember that I don't need to feel like a burden. Um, I, I'm not 
on an unequal level as other people. There's a lot of people with food allergy. This is a normal thing. So I don't need to feel ashamed about it. At the end of the day, we are all different for many different reasons. The fact that I just can't eat a couple of foods is what makes me different. And that is completely okay. Because at the end of the day, we are all dealt different cards. And it's not about the cards you get, it's how you play them. So we know there's no redeal in life. Um, there's a lot of amazing treatments that uh, are getting studied right now and a lot of advances in the food allergy research world. And you can find a lot of that info at foodallergycanada.ca. But um, you know, for, for me, I'm, I, bank, I bank on simply managing my own food allergies right now. I hope for uh, treatments and cures in the future, but for right now, we have to make the most of it and thrive. So my main point today is to own your food allergy narrative. You probably know al already the skills to manage effectively how to stay safe and carrying your epinephrine and, and all of these things. And we have a lot of great resources on that at Food Allergy Canada. But I'm gonna be talking a little bit more about the things inside your head today of how you can own your food allergy narrative. And that's something that only you in your head can control or else someone else will. And what I mean by that, you know, if you're, the, if you don't own it yourself, maybe, you know, up till this point, maybe your parents, they've been the one that have told you, um, you know, how to manage your food allergies in different situations. But moving forward, the ball starts to get more and more in your court. At the end of the day, these are your food allergies. It's your story, your life, and your script, and you get to write how it should be. And, and that, that is a really important thing because as we get older, we need to get more independent. We, we obviously don't want to be on our first date or when we're 18 years old and have our parents sitting at the table beside us in a restaurant, uh, making sure we ask the right questions, right? So we have to, to really own it at some point. And now is, never, uh, now is, is a, as good a time as ever. So when you think about scripts, you can't help but think of movies, right? So I'm going to take a little bit of a different spin to hopefully make some of the points clear today in the path that I'm going on is that I'll be talking about rocking your food allergy like a Hollywood star. And I'm going to break it down into four main categories from actor, screenwriter, director to distributor. And somehow I'm going to relate these all back to food allergy and in, uh, in empowering ways. And hopefully you can kind of peg where you are now and also try to chart where you want to go. So when we talk about a actor with food allergy, you know, you're playing a part. And it, as you know, this is not just a one-off role for you in dealing with a food allergy for a part in a show. This is your life. You've had it for a long time. Um, and if you want to have that attitude where it's just a one-off thing, you're, you're setting yourself up for less than success. An actor, someone who just follows the script, they're aware of the facts, they're aware of what they need to do, um, but there can be a lot of improvisation. And with food allergy, you really want to have you know, your, your facts very firm, so you're not improvising as much as you need to. You, you really want to know how to deal with different situations. Uh, you do what's needed. They're invested in the role for now. But at the end of the day, who are they really, you know, as a person? Because they're putting on a show. And if you have a food allergy, you need to really control it, not only right now, but long term. So that's kind of, there's the actor route, but I really do push you and encourage you to go much, much further than just that, just, a, just going through the script. Because a true rock star is someone who actually can call the shots. And getting closer to that is a screenwriter. And a screenwriter in the traditional sense is someone that actually you know, does the research. They are very well informed. They actually create the script um, based on facts, on knowledge, on, on visualizations that they come up with of how this can actually be shown to people. But you know, not, not in the action sense, they're not actually putting it on camera, but they are writing that whole script. They are controlling the narrative. So this is a really good place to, to get to that next level where you do know your food allergy information um, and you're starting to write how, how the facts actually intertwine with your life. And 
when you think about the facts, I encourage you all to become a food allergy expert. And that's your basis of your script. When you have that foundation and knowledge, you can, can really control that narrative. And becoming an expert is, is, you know, there's a lot of things that we've learned firsthand, but there, this is a great time now that we're at home so much to actually go to an, another level, try to find a gap in our own knowledge, parents or teens, whoever you are, there's, there's a lot to learn out there and foodallergycanada.ca has info on all of these things, knowing the correct signs and symptoms, what may contain really means, do you really know, have you seen a, the research on it? Because there's some really fascinating stuff out there on the risk. What do you say if you actually call 911 in an emergency? What are the what ways cross-contamination can occur outside the home, at home? Where to keep your epinephrine on a hot day or a cold day in a Canadian winter? What exactly is a biphasic reaction? How long does it last for? And what is OIT and all of these new promising treatments going on? And you know, these are just some of the, of the things that we could be learning right now I'm sure we all have a good grasp on them, but you know, I encourage you to take it to that next level because I find when I am planted in facts, when someone you know pressures me or offers me something, I know the risk, the exact risk, and it's it's easier for me then to not waver on my on my core knowledge. So that is step one: is becoming an expert, taking it to the next level. But Beyond the screenwriter, I do encourage you to go further and bring your script to life and become a director. Get in that director seat. And as we know, a director, that is the person that gets to choose the script. They're the one that sees that initial um, uh, screenwrite and they get to choose that script. That's the one I want. They choose the people that are going to be in it, the actors, the actresses, the genre, the scenes that are going to be shown, they have complete control. And if you if you relate that back to food allergy, this is a good place to be, where you are really defining your own road and all of the things that are that are on it. So, what does your food allergy life look like? When you're a director, this is this is really what you get to choose of what it looks like. Are you just kind of the actor? Are you um, are you taking control of it? What genre do you want it to be? Do you want it to be drama? Hopefully not, or an, insp an inspiring tale. Um, hopefully it's out of the mystery category and, uh, and into action. But th these are the things that you get to choose, such as do you play the victim in terms of your own character, in terms of you, do you play the victim or are you the unstoppable hero? And what I mean by that is, you know, how do others perceive you? It's not only how you perceive yourself, which we're talking a lot about, but if you think about how others perceive you, are, are they seeing you as the one that's always complaining about their allergies or not taking them seriously or always looking for the pity party, which sometimes I need my pity party, I admit, but not all the time. Or are you the one that's got them un under control? Are you the unstoppable hero in this story that yeah, I have allergies, but I am still going to, you know, grow up and be a musician or be a doctor. Or they're not going to slow me down at all. I deal with them in stride. So think of what that looks like from the other side when people see you and your relationship to your food allergy. And, and that actually, you know, has a big, big influence on how other people treat you with respect to your allergies. I always say, when I take my allergies seriously, other people take my allergies seriously. It, it really does work. You also get to choose who you surround yourself with, who are the actors, the actresses that you want in your script. And you know, are you, want, are you okay surrounding yourself with people that don't make you feel great, especially about your food allergy, the ones that are constantly peer pressuring you or teasing you unwanted attention? Or are there people that really just get it? and they've got your back and they help you. They, they check ingredients. They're making sure that you're following the right steps. This, this is a choice that you have of who you get to surround yourself with. And for me, I, I have dropped friends in my life because of this reason. And it wasn't easy because I liked uh, people for a lot of different reasons. But at the end of the day, if I felt worse 
because I was with that person and they made me feel bad over something I can't control, I don't have to deal with that. So I have really wonderful people that I surround myself with and, and, and that's that. <laughs> and I, I really encourage you to think about that, the people in your life that are, um, that are giving you a plus one or a minus one in terms of your overall boost. Peer pressure is is something that um, I wish wasn't a thing, but it is, and it's a very complicated thing. Um, and it's easy to talk talk about on paper, but when you're actually there, it's hard because you know you want to fit in. You have your friends or classmates doing really you know intriguing things, let's say, and you want to join in some way or form, um, but you have to stand your ground. You know, if you, they are, if that idea is putting you at risk in your food allergy, you need to stand your ground. They're coming from a place where they don't know any better. This seems like fun. They are curious, but they're uneducated about food allergy compared to you. So this is why you got to stand your ground on your confidence, your knowledge, your past experiences. You know, this peer pressure could lead to trouble uh, and awareness. So. You know, not easy to deal with these situations, but to try to actually turn them around, to actually, you know, stand your ground and be confident and say why you can't join or do this or do that. Um, and you can use humor, you can use facts, um, but not wavering and not kind of giving in. This is the tough thing, but it does get easier and easier over time. The more times you, you see a road and you know, like, I, I gotta shut that door right now. Um, and, and then people will start to expect that of you. That becomes part of your character. And then people will not be tugging on you as much, but it takes a first step, a second step, and it takes time and it takes practice. I'm gonna talk a little bit now about how you can actually show that you rock your food allergy. We kind of talked a little bit about it, how you can be perceived by others, but there's actually some, some strategies that you can instill where you're really proving that you rock your food allergies. And uh, I'm, I'll go through a few, a few of those in detail. So first off, how can you rock your epinephrine? And there's so many amazing cases out there right now. Um, back, back when I was a kid in the 80s, it was quite limited. And I'm just amazed by how much is out there, whether it's the leather professional wallet cases or hip cross body bags that uh, that are you know you can fit some other really handy stuff in there or crafty you know I'm a big fan of Etsy where you can get unbelievable crafty carriers for uh, for your auto injectors so there's a lot of neat ways to do it and when I have my cool case and I bring it out if I show someone that's kind of the first thing they see is just like whoa you you're on another level here. You're stylish with your food allergy. But you know what? For me, that's just part of rocking it. That's just part of my persona of like, yeah, you know, just like I wouldn't put on terrible uh, galoshes to church. Uh, I, I like to, to dress the part. I, I, I like to look serious about my food allergies. So that's how I carry it. Um, and obviously, you, whatever it is you do choose, whatever you want to do, it just make sure you carry it and inform others where you have it. That is very, very important. So um, you're not alone with that knowledge. Knowing how and when to use epinephrine is obviously crucial. And understanding the symptoms, you know, do, doing a refresher, what do they look like? Um, how, how early can they appear? Um, and, and, and really knowing what this could look like on you. Uh, checking with your allergists, practicing with a trainer. When was the last time you did that? And um, if you go to the manufacturers of auto injectors, they usually send you free trainers in the mail. So a great thing to review of uh, to make sure that you're you're on par with the the gold standard of how to use an auto injector. And I like this last tip where visualizing visualization, so you'll be prepared to act. Because let me tell you, if you've had an allergic or anaphylactic reaction before. You, you, you never plan on it. It's not like you wake up in the day and say, today's the day, I'm gonna have an allergic reaction. It's not, it doesn't work that way, right? It is always something that's unwelcome and it happens and it leaves you kind of wondering, 
is this a reaction? Is it not? And there's a couple seconds where you're really wondering. Um, so to actually visualize, put yourself in situations. What do hives on my arm look like? What does what do swollen lips feel like? You know, what what are these signs that if they did happen, I'm not just kind of wondering what on earth's going on, but connecting some dots in advance. So when those dots start appearing in in that situation, you are you're already making those connections in your head, and you're faster to actually act and use your epinephrine and and call nine one one. And then there's reacting to a reaction, and you know for for me this is one of the most important points of all is that it is not easy to have a reaction in any type of social situation, especially, but anywhere really. Um, because internally, you're having all of these warning bells fire off in your head. You're wondering, okay, is this the real deal? How bad is, is this gonna be? You know, there's a lot of second guessing. There's a lot of questions going on in your mind. It's not easy at all, um, but it's so important. You know, like we talked about in that last slide that you act. This is not a wait and see. If you know you have severe food allergies, you know these symptoms, you gotta act. Social situations adds complexity. Um, I am guilty. I am personally guilty of having a reaction and not informing the people around me when I was a teenager. And it was horrible and it was scary and I had no support and I was embarrassed after all of it was said and done that I, I did something so foolish and handled it on my own. And why did I do it? Well, honestly, embarrassment and how silly now looking back at that because people would have wanted to help me. And I have then had situations where I learned from that mistake and I had a reaction and I told the person right in front of me at the dinner table at a restaurant and it was incredibly tough to do. I knew we were having a nice night. It was a date. Um, and you know, just by saying the word, the words, I think I'm having an allergic reaction. I knew the whole night was done in terms of that date, but I, I did it. And I'm so glad I did because I had support right there of someone else with a clear headed mind who could help me in that real serious emergency situation. So I, I encourage you speak up. If you have a reaction, do not run off to the bathroom alone. Do not think you've got this and um, that you can handle it by yourself. People, your friends are there to help you. Um, and, and no one would ever, ever get mad at you for having a reaction or uh, get you in trouble. It is so important to actually speak up. And then you can't talk about a reaction without talking about what happens next and bouncing back from a reaction. And there, there is no easy road after you have an anaphylactic reaction uh, right afterwards. For me, my, my, one of my most severe reactions, I needed some time off afterwards. I just wasn't, I wasn't, I needed to really reflect on, on what happened. I needed to learn from it, my, my own mistakes, the situations that I put myself in. So it's okay to, to just want some time for yourself, but do what you need to do. Journal, um, talk to friends, get the support you need afterwards, because this is one of the biggest learning experiences you could have in your life. This can put you on a whole different trajectory um, from that reaction of how are you going to grow and be better with your allergies moving forward? How can you prevent that situation? And I, I, I'm a believer that reactions are preventable um, by myself. And I, sometimes I know I put myself in some bad situations and I'd love to play the blame game, but at the end of the day, I can usually trace it back to myself and not asking enough questions or not trusting my gut or taking some type of risk. Obviously, some things are out of our control, but um, it's all about that self-reflection and getting better than ever. And, and that's just all part of that experience after a reaction of, of trying to grow from it and, and getting confident um, after the fact, because um, you, that's a major, major thing to learn from. Rocking your medical ID. And when we get to Q&A uh, at the end, I'm gonna turn on my webcam so you can see me and I will show you my medical ID that I have. I love it. I use Medical Alert, and here's just a few examples of what's out there. Like oh, They've come so far in terms of style and so many cool options now for uh, 
for people with food allergy. So there's the rubber silicone ones that are great for sports and athletics. You have ones that are you know, digitally enhanced now that can act as a uh, as a heart monitor and um, an activity monitor. And then charm bracelets, there's, you name it, they've got the models out there. And there's discounts available right now through foodallergycanada.ca. So take advantage of that medical alert promotion slash link is there. Um, but you know, for me, that's important. I wear my allergies on my sleeve. It has been a conversation starter on countless occasions where someone sees it and they ask me, oh, you know, I see you have a medical alert. And usually I've had, especially on airplanes, it's, it's actually helped in a few situations where someone had um, something I was allergic to. And, you know, they told me right then and there, oh, sorry, I brought this, I won't open it. So just the fact that I wore it on my sleeve in several occasions has really helped make things easier for me. And of course, if we ever do have an allergic reaction, this can help speak for you. This can help let other people know what's wrong in that emergency. So um, very, very important. Um, and paramedics around the world are, are trained to, to look for these in a medical emergency. So very, very important. Now, this is my favorite. And if, honestly, if I could write a book, <laughs> it would be the Food Allergy Snappy Comeback book. <laughs> I don't know if it would get published or not, but I've used so many in the past. So. I'll preface this by saying when when people ask me unwanted questions, when people show their their ignorance to me, uh, I tend to use humor. I find it very effective with my sense of humor to combat silly questions with silly answers. You might choose differently, and that's completely fine, whether you use facts and your knowledge or or whatever you want to do in terms of the strategy. But I would say the more that you're prepared for questions that you don't want to deal with, the fact is sometimes you deal with questions you don't want to deal with. And some of the most common ones I get are, here's just the starters. Um, what would you do if, and then insert some type of crazy scenario. So are you like allergic to, and then you know insert some really out there food or combination like, what would happen if, and these what if questions, you've probably got these before and they can be anything. Like there's, I talk to kids all the time about food allergies in school and this question can get out there. And then, huh, so you're like that character and, and maybe they're, you know, their only experience with food allergy might be pop culture. It might just be from a show they saw on television or a movie. So that's their point of reference. You know, and with all of these things, I think that's really important to keep in mind that when people ask you a question that obviously is not up to what you'd like to be answering, it's coming from a place of they just probably don't know any better. They probably have not been educated on food allergy. They probably haven't had people like you in their life before that could bring them to another level. Um, so. I keep that in mind. Instead of getting mad in this, these situations where someone asks an unwanted question, I usually try to take it and, and use it as a door. I open up a door to education. So my favorite, I always get asked, it's such a dumb question to me that, uh, what would you, what would happen if I dangled a peanut over your head? And maybe you've been asked a question like that. And I usually put it back to them as, what, what would you do if I, you know, what would happen if I dangled a piano over your head? And for me, it's just trying to contrast dumb question with dumb question um, by trying to show them that obviously in that situation, it's not safe, um, but I'm just really trying to put it, make them self-reflect on that question and think about it, you know, what, what is the risk there and, uh, and go from there. But at the end of the day, really with this whole section on being a director of your food allergy, it's all coming down to being confident with that script and bringing it to life. And remembering that food allergy is normal. There are lots of us that have food allergy and it's completely fine and okay. Tons of us have it. And what would be more embarrassing? And we kind of talked about this in the social situation of having a reaction. Would it be more embarrassing um, having a reaction where you run off by yourself and you don't tell anybody and, or where you actually tell them? And I know in situations, I've heard this from people before where they didn't tell anybody their friends were actually mad at them. Their friends were actually like steaming mad 
that they wouldn't trust them to help them, that they thought that their friends would be mad at them. You know, you have friends that for a reason that they've got your back, they want to help you. And when you don't trust them, when you don't tell them the, you know, what's going on, you know, think of it, think of it from their shoes of what they would be thinking. Like they want to know what's going on with you. They want to help you. They're your friends. So um, I always kind of keep that in mind in terms of my overall confidence is that people want to help me um, more times than not. And then lastly, going back to Hollywood here, I'm going to talk about the, the role of the distributor. So we've, we've gone through actor, actress, screenwriter, director, but distributor. And this I want you to think of as kind of like the Netflix of, of the whole poll here, where you can have the script, you can bring the script to life, but the distributor is the one that actually shares it around so more people see the movie. And if you relate this to allergies, this is when you are empowered. This is when you are rocking your food allergies and you are bringing your script to life. You can pay that forward and you can help other teens, other youth, other adults uh, with their food allergies and empower them through your knowledge. And it's such a way to make a difference and pave the way for other people. You can really be a trailblazer. And I'll give you just a couple examples to, uh, to show the point here. Um, the first are our sisters, Danielle and Lauren. They're from Rhode Island in the US and they wrote their state senator regarding uh, food service and safety with food allergy because they just felt more could be done uh, in restaurants to keep everyone safe. And the senator, one of my favorite quotes, he said that uh, out of all of the letters I get in a year, this was the only one I received from teenagers. This one letter asking for advocacy and food service. And it just went to the top of his pile. And then they made a law. They made guidelines for restaurants for food service safety on food allergy. And it was just because these two girls saw the problem, saw a need and wrote a letter. That easy. JJ, he is, he's a dynamo out there and he has a book that he has created for kids called The Land of Can, where it's all about empowering. You can, you can do anything with a food allergy and there's school programs and resources that he has made in his early 20s. So, you know, that, that's a great example, paying it forward and sharing that, uh, that knowledge. And then Anita and Alyssa, who are trailblazers themselves by starting up one of the first in the world food allergy clubs on a campus. So they have set up an incredible food allergy club at McMaster University. And it has now became, become a bustling hub where students can actually get informed, especially at a really critical stage where you're, you know, first year university, what's campus life, life like with a food allergy? They're providing the resources for that group of what, you know, what to look out for in our specific cafeterias, you know, how to get connected to health services, what's the, um, the emergency system on campus. So, you know, that, that can be done at school after school after school. So a lot of great ideas out there. And, you know, for you, it's a question of how could you take this experience, your expertise in food allergy and, and really be a distributor of that and share that wealth. And perhaps it's a presentation in your elementary school or community center uh, or volunteering for Food Allergy Canada. We have a youth advisory panel where you can join and you get volunteer hours for high school just by sharing your knowledge, doing some very, very, uh, you know, for you simple things because you've got this expertise um, that can be shared and fundraise. You know, are there things that you wish could be better, um, you know, in the short term, the long term? What are ways that we could make that sustainable for, for everybody with a food allergy? So there's a lot of different things you can do um, and never be a stranger if you have ideas to reach out to Food Allergy Canada because they're, they're such a community-oriented organization and welcome your ideas. So why would you want to take that empowerment and share it? Well, it further empowers yourself and it holds yourself to a higher standard. When you are actually going out there and telling people you should be doing this, you should be doing that, all of a sudden you've set that bar for yourself. You know you have to be doing that if you're telling other people to be doing that. So it reinforces some of these best practices on yourself. And that's a really positive thing, let alone just the good feeling that you get making a difference for the community. And you probably remember tough times when you were a kid um, or different situations. 
this is a way to really, you know, pay it forward. And, you know, we've got one program called Allergy Pals I mentioned before, and that is an amazing opportunity where I call them big kids with food allergy. They do online mentorship with young kids with food allergy for a, an hour every single week. And it's amazing to see, you know, young kids looking up to someone like you that has this info, that has those experiences. And it's just a really supportive environment that you can uh, make a difference in. We're about to go into the Q&A portion. So this is, you know, first, first call if you want to put in your questions uh, in the Q&A box. But if you want to connect with me directly, you are more than welcome to. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. So uh, feel free to connect with me on any of those channels. And I would, uh, you know, happy to entertain any of your questions uh, beyond today in the longer run. I'm, I'm usually posting specifically about food allergy. And lastly, before Q&A, I just want to share one quote that, uh, that I really love. And it's, be who you are and say what you feel, because those who mind don't matter. And those who matter don't mind. So essentially, just be you and don't worry what other people think. And when it comes back to food allergy, don't worry. It's, it's rocket. You've got this. So we are now going to get into some Q&A. So with that, I'm going to turn on my webcam. And I'll take down my slides here. Hey, everybody. Welcome to my living room. <laughs> so I'm going to pause my screen here. And um, hopefully you can see me on the webcam. So we now have time for any of the questions that you want to ask at all. And I'm, I have some of the stock questions that came in, in in advance. So I can always be addressing some of those. But um, I already see a couple coming in here, which is fantastic. So the first one, oh wow, lots of questions. So you're gonna keep me busy. So confidence and a social question. As a teenager, how do you build confidence for social and celebratory situations when you have multiple food allergies to manage? So confidence in social situations, parties, things like this. Um, yeah, it's, I, I, it's 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 tough and i would say one of the things is you get better at it as you get more experience with it the more social situations you're in obviously you want to be prepared for the first one but um you know with the help of your parents you're not take, jumping taking big leaps into these situations but i think confidence in these situations comes from the fact that you have a plan that you're thinking a couple steps ahead if you're going to a party you're thinking okay i'm not just going to show up i'm going to think through this Will they have food at this party? Where, you know, where am I going to bring my, keep my auto injector when I'm there? Am I going to have it on me? Is there a coat room? Should I have it there? Think through some, a little bit of strategies. Who's going to be at this place? Do they know about my food allergies? Do they not know? Therefore, I need to take a couple other extra steps here. So, you know, for me, I'm a planner, <laughs> especially when I go on, on trips, traveling, but even just like a party like this, um, it's having that plan ahead of time, thinking through some things will help give you a foundation and that builds the confidence rather than kind of going with the flow and, oh no, there's that there. Oh no, there's this. You have a little bit more of a plan. Okay, a question regarding attitude. My sibling doesn't have the same struggle with food allergies like I do. How do I have a more positive attitude? They don't have to navigate the issues I have to. Yeah, that's, that's tough when we see our sibling without food allergies and they're a, a beaming ray of sunshine. Um, sometimes it's easy to take that back in terms of, well, they don't have to deal with this. They don't have to deal with the one, you know, some of these things we said before with maybe feeling like a burden. Um, and yeah, it's a tough thing, but I think at the end of the day, you gotta really reflect on what are the things that are bringing you down and how do we address them? So, <clears throat> you know, looking for some root causes here, Am I upset because of my allergies, because I'm limiting the choices of others? And maybe if I talk to those people, do I, are they really bothered? Um, am I really upset because I have to carry my auto injector with me everywhere I go? You know, for me, yeah, sometimes that's not the most fun thing. Absolutely. I've got my uh, mine with me everywhere I go, but I think in terms of perspective, I know people with other conditions that have to carry around other things well beyond um, uh, an auto injector. So for me, it's manageable. I'll show you my 
my man bag. I carry it in this everywhere I go among with a whole bunch of other junk. But, you know, for me, it's just kind of part of my persona now. And I think the more that you try to embrace it, uh, the more your attitude kind of grows with it and it becomes a little bit less of a, of a big deal um, and more of just a thing that you've got, you know how to rock it. It's, it's not going to be bubbling to the surface. Awesome. Some really great questions coming in. I'm going to go to a couple that were sent in advance here. And please feel free to submit more. Okay. There was a question. Oh, I love this one. How do I feel confident interrupting an adult when you don't feel well or have questions about the food? So how do you be confident with authority, right? When an adult might be giving you grief or telling you, oh yeah, it's fine, don't worry about it. These are tough situations because, you know, we grow up with adults here and, you know, they, they know best. But here's what I would, I would tell you is that you know best with food allergy. You're the one that knows yourself, you know your allergies, you know your situations, you know uh, your background with it. So, you know, you wanna be tactful. You don't wanna be, you know, incredibly rude to someone when they, they might just not understand. Um, but kinda, you, you know that it's okay to stand your ground and be confident and that sometimes adults don't know, know best. You know, you probably have a great aunt <laughs> out there that, you know, might not get food allergies or somebody that's really closely related to your family. And, you know, maybe you don't want to insult them, but you know that there's a certain line that you don't go, go by um, in terms of your own safety. Um, so keeping that in perspective is, it can be helpful. Um, all right, another question that we got in advance. Do, do, do. Okay, how to manage a food allergy when you're attending high school where there are no restrictions on what food can be brought in. That's an interesting one. So we might have some uh, preteens out there that are going to high school and elementary school can definitely be a very, very different environment than a uh, high school environment and a university campus for all, all that matter. And I think it's important to remember that is that it's gonna be different and you can't expect the same throughout these stages. You know, in elementary school, there will be different safety precautions, whether there's di different restrictions for food in different classrooms. Um, but then in high school, it can be a little bit more of a free-for-all food-wise. And if anything, it's a little bit more closer to the real world. And sometimes it's more fast than you would like it to be, especially for parents out there. But I think, you know, at the end of the day, you want to be starting to think about mitigating and not eliminating because there's going to be situations where the food is around that might not make you feel comfortable but it's not you know for me i don't want to freak out if i see my allergy at the other end of the room i want to assess the risk and know it's minimal and then put myself out of this situation somehow so you know it, i'm mitigating that risk i know i don't want to be shaking hands with the person that's eating uh, my allergen down at the other end of the table um, so I might be removing myself from that situation. I'm very cognizant. I'm going to be washing my hands afterwards. Uh, you have, to, for me, it's, it's a little bit more awareness and more cognizant of your situational surrounding because there might not be so many safeguards in place. As you move on to college and university, this is obviously even more true where it's, uh, it's less and less and food can be in the classroom setting. Who knows what the, the standards are? So, um, I think that's just a good thing to keep in mind in that as you go through these different stages, that we're preparing for them accordingly in terms of knowing what the risks are and having a plan, talking to the school administration, having our emergency plans. So in case anything does happen, there is a plan in place and Food Allergy Canada has those on their website. Another question came in um, regarding social. What if someone plays a game that like you are allergic to and I'm not comfortable participating in the game? All right, let me try to think of an example. They're, they're playing a game with something I'm allergic to. So maybe it's like, I don't know, <laughs> ping pong with, with you know, something you're allergic to in the cups or some other food related game. Maybe you, you lost all your Monopoly pieces and you're starting to use food. I don't know what, it, what, what situations those can be in. But, you know, if, if that does happen, here's a chance. These are the opportunities to actually 
start owning your food allergies and rocking them in situations where you can speak up before you're in a situation where you're halfway through the game and you're saying, oh, I don't want to, I can't really touch that. Get ahead of it because at that point it's too late and people are going to view you as someone that is not as confident with your food allergy because you didn't say anything when you were uncomfortable in the first place. And this is that this muscle that you have to start building and it's tough, it's absolutely tough, but you start off with small situations like with your friends and just say right at the start of that game, like, oh, awesome game. Can we just change the pieces into rocks or whatever you need to do and let them know why. And it's not always an easy discussion. It's, it's hard to have that confidence and, and self-esteem to do it. But just think of what it looks like a few steps down the road, a few minutes later when you don't say anything, what that looks like, and it can snowball. So to get ahead of it, you know, in all situations, whether it's dating before the first kiss, whether it's a game, whether it's a party, letting the host know, trying to get ahead of it as much as possible. And I see just so many questions coming in. This is fantastic. And, um, and I think the thing I'll stress right now is that I, I wish I had all the answers. I don't. There's no black and white. Throughout my life of dealing with food allergies, there's there's no manual of how to deal with this socially and psychosocially. It's 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 a lot of trial and error with what works for you. So I'm I'm giving some pretty broad strokes that have worked a lot for me and some best practices in terms of guidelines. But a lot of this is just kind of as you grow and develop, you you will figure out your own strategies of how to manage. One in terms of carrying your auto injector, where to keep the auto injector on field trips like skiing or on a holiday at the beach? Oh my goodness, aren't we all daydreaming right now? So if you are skiing and there is a certain temperature range and when you get your auto injector, read, read the manual, read the instructions that come with it because it will specify that information for you of what temperature range you should keep it in. When you're skiing, I'm a snowboarder, so I usually have uh, an, an inside my jacket pocket that I keep it nice and close to my chest where it's insulated. So places like this are good. Um, if you know you want it with you, you know, ideally at all times. And then on the beach, well, I was oh now I'm dreaming. Last year on vacation, I was uh, I was in a, a really nice beach, and I was the one that took control of the beach location. I got ahead of it. Instead of like right in the middle of the beach, I found the spot that was a little bit in the shade where I could have my bag and at least in a spot that was protected. Uh, and you know, people that wanted sun, there's lots of room there. But I also told you know, we have we have some cold some cold drinks here too. Let's keep those cold. Let's get this spot. I can keep my my epinephrine warm um, at a good temperature here. So it's those type of things. When your gut tells you like, uh oh, no 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 no, that's the moment. That's the moment when you probably have some type of choice where you could mitigate the risk at right then and there. So it's a lot of just thinking on your feet, on the fly, um, and preparing. Travel question: What is your top tip for traveling? Wow, a lot of a lot of daydreaming questions right now, and I do hope that you're all staying safe and well and staying positive during this current time. Uh, but for for traveling, when when traveling opens up again, you know there's there's a lot you can do and I can't it's hard to say one top tip I think all of my tips no matter what situation are always having epinephrine whether it's you know epipen allergic you want to have that with you and and multiple multiple multiples of that but with traveling um you want to have safe food with you in case you get in um, a jam where you're having trouble in a different environment finding something that's safe for you if you're going on an airplane, it's doing your research, doing research on the policies of that airplane, of that uh, airline, of what they could offer you in terms of possibly some type of um, uh, regulations that they might have in place or policies. Uh, if you're going to a foreign language company uh, or company, foreign language country, I was going to say my company uh, equally, it's this, this is why I created a company because I struggled when I went to Europe for the first time communicating my food allergy and it resulted in a reaction just because of broken telephone and broken language. So, you know, to actually get a card that states your allergies in different languages, this is a, is a mitigation step. It's not gonna be a sure, surefire way of, of anything, but it can help at least get that message across. And then you're still trusting your instincts. You're still carrying your auto injector. 
Um, but these are just some of the things that you can do. But I think ultimately sticking to your basics, not taking you know adventures with food and um, uh, doing your research on the destination you're going to in advance. We have a few minutes left here. So we're gonna squeeze in a couple more questions. Uh, I think maybe one or two and then we'll wrap it up. So I'm gonna do another one right from the registration. We haven't really talked about, talked about social exclusion. Hmm. I think at the end of the day, like there was a lot in terms of situations. There was a, a few about confidence and I think what I want to leave you with is, is really an overarching um, perspective on confidence and that if you have a food allergy, you're the authority on your food allergy. It is yours. And that's the whole tying it back to own your narrative. And when you're the authority, you think about people in authority positions. Why are they in authority? Their knowledge, what they've done with their life. And if you kind of connect that to your food allergy, why are you authority over your own allergy? Well, your knowledge what you've done with them in your life. You know, these are the things that put you in this, this spot. And if you view yourself as an authority, think of how we view other people as an authority with that knowledge that they have. You respect them. You don't second guess them. You don't ask them these really silly questions about their knowledge. And that's what I really hope that you can take out of this today is that when you get yourself to that level of, I'm an authority, and you know, would, would you second guess me about my food allergy? Probably not. My medical alert, you know, I've, I've got it right here. Um, and if you do, I know how to stand my ground and I know how to deal with that accordingly, but I'm going to get less of it just because of my persona, how I handle myself with, re with relation to my allergies. So that's how I just really wanted to tie it all back in today. And I think we will do, before I wrap things up, I think we'll do one last poll question. I'm going to turn off my web camera. Thanks for coming in to my living room. Um, and we'll do one last poll question. I would just love to see after attending this session today, how confident do you feel now in managing your food allergy or you think your child would be after viewing this on a scale of one to five? And you know that's, that is quite an increase from our, our first poll. So um, I'm really happy that hopefully you got some, some helpful practical tips today on how to rock your food allergy. It's kind of a fun fun title, but at the end of the day, um, we, we, we know that there's some basic things that we can't negotiate on, but then there's a lot of wiggle room on how we hold ourselves with this condition. And I hope you got some valuable strategies out of that today. Lastly, I just want to give a special thank you to the sponsors of today's webinar for their support. And that is Allerject, the Walter and Maria Schroeder Foundation and the Sean Delaney Memorial Golf, Golf Classic. Thank you so much. And lastly, if you would like to see a recording of this webinar, it will be posted on our website, foodallergycanada.ca slash webinars. And we have so many more incredible events coming up on our calendar. So more webinars, there's one on anxiety coming up in June. Um, so please check up on foodallergycanada.ca slash events to sign up for more and get more information about all the wonderful things Food Allergy Canada is doing right now. So that concludes our webinar today. I wanna to thank all of you for attending and I wish you all the best and hope that you rock your food allergy. Thank you.